Hi, welcome to another edition of the Firefighter's Commute, where we hope to mentor you on your firefighting travels. You're with Captain Dave and Engineer Lisa. What about some interview techniques? So we kind of shot the breeze about this a little bit earlier. We were talking about strengths and weaknesses. So when you turn in your resume and you check the box and you get to proceed to the next stone, as you said, or to the next level of the hiring process, you will come across a hiring panel who wants to ask you questions. And um, some of the questions that I've encountered on my multiple interviews were, tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. So I'm like, okay, they'll either say like three strengths, three weaknesses, um, but you need to have a couple for yourself already pre-wired and pre-ready to go. And now it's hard. It's because you start thinking about your weaknesses and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? I don't want to say anything that's going to totally damn me. And then I'm going to answer those questions, feel shitty about myself. And then I can't even come up with any strengths because I've just sold myself out. So it's a really good idea to practice what your strengths and weaknesses are and to think about what kind of weakness is actually like a strength. So I uh, work with this guy, and we were going over the process of being hired for captains, and we were talking about strengths and weaknesses, and I was like, my weakness is blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, that can't be one of your weaknesses. you got to pick a better weakness. And I'm like, well, pick a better weakness. Of course, I don't want to tell, like, my biggest weakness to my possible employer, but I need to, like, have some self owning and um, understanding of my my own self so I can portray what it is that I feel might be a weakness. So I can't remember what my weakness was, um, you know, but uh, he had said, well, in my interview, I said a weakness that I know of is that I'm not bilingual. And what I'm choosing to do is to rectify that. And I would like to take a Rosetta Stone eventually one day in another language so I can be bilingual to help better serve my community. And I was like, oh, my God, that's the best weakness anybody could ever have. And that's a weakness we probably all share is like, oh, I'd like to be bilingual or trilingual or multilingual, you know, linguist or something. And I think that knowing some weaknesses like that will help you stand out. So why sell yourself out? We already are our own worst critics. Come up with a positive way to spin yourself to highlight your assets versus, like, cause you super detriment. So a weakness of mine forever on out will be I wish I was bilingual. And I know that that's a weakness of mine because sometimes I have a hard time communic communicating with patients who speak a different language. So I would really like to rectify this and learn a second language. And whether or not I actually choose to be, you know, bilingual or not is up to me. But at that time when somebody's asking me, I 100% do believe it. And, you know, I do have, a, I have taken a lot of Spanish and stuff. But if you don't use it, you lose it. And I haven't used mine enough. So I have made attempts to become better at, at different languages. But I do feel that that's a great weakness to have. What do you think? Uh, that, uh, do you think I was long-winded? You're looking like you're confused. No, I'm not confused at all. I have a, I have a actually a strategy that's in my curriculum uh, because I have asked that question in interview processes. And then one of the epiphanies that I had was that it's everywhere. This is one of those questions that at, at, it could be used as fodder, and it is used as fodder uh, for interview tactics. Um, it can be asked four, five, six different ways, so it can be used to vet out um, a truthful response. Um, I'm kind of a hard, I'm kind of a hard ass with this question. Opportunity in this particular question, it could be broken down into three magical points, but I'll just go over one: is your opportunity to hit it out of the park. So, what is somebody who hears this question over and over and over and over again? They hear either Single word answers. I'm a self-starter, self with starter and a hyphen. Um, they, they're, I'm truthful on this. So you have, if you want to imagine things on so a temperature So it's funny bowl. when you say a one-word sentence, though. I think sometimes the evaluators train to sit there and listen, and that awkward silence is uncomfortable. So it'll either everybody enjoys the awkward silence, or the candidate will continue to give a concrete detail like you said and even just in my narrative i said i'm a self-starter and then i proceeded to say why which takes you to the next hash mark and let's say it's the temperature bulb you got the base bulb red and it, the temperature's rising and the red coloring goes up the temperature bulb 
you know, towards the top. So when you just give a one-word answer, you at least fill the bulb to right. thank God we can go on to the next question. You're probably not going to get the job. If you're, if you're not able to answer that question with something of an expansive nature that fills in some of the big boxes that I have, because right now as an evaluator, my big boxes are fear-based. Like, who are you? Tell me who you are. Here's your opportunity. Who are you? Are you somebody to be afraid of? I don't know who the hell you are. So if you can't answer a question as to your strengths and weaknesses, it could be you're concealing something or you never even know what your strengths and weaknesses are. So here's your opportunity to fumble right in front of me or hit it out of the park. What I teach is an, a self-sustaining answer. So what are some of your strengths and some of your weaknesses? I'm a self-starter. If this happened, I would do this. So all you did was give a hypothetical, um, fantasy, fantastic scenario that how you would come in and save the day. This is what I would do. That takes you just to the next hash mark. People would, some people would go... On this date, I did this, and I did this, this, which showed I'm very strong in these, this weakness. Well, I've learned never to end on a weakness, so I don't I have any answer weakness. with just how you finish the weakness. But then you, you get, a, get a study of the art, and you find out you start with your weakness, and you end with your strengths. Ah, ha, ha. But the wise evaluator still like, I'm studying it as well, son. I'm listening for your answer. Give me something that eliminates fear. What do you got? Well, I've got this real-life scenario that occurred. Okay, I'll listen, but are you going to be able to give every answer in an oral interview, a long-winded uh, situation that occurred that requires some sort of background, some sort of protagonist? Oh, God, we got 400 of you uh, between now and three, three days. You've just lost your evaluator if you go on some sort of fantastic – because you have to – you have to tether it to your answer. So I've never sat on an actual hiring panel, but I have done multiple um, assessments to help people be hired. And uh, one of the questions was, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And uh, this candidate, I, I actually watched them turn themselves inside out, and it was horribly miserable. I felt so sorry for this candidate because the candidate has worked through so much and has come so far but couldn't get over the fact of some of the things that they had done. So while it's important to accurately display who you are, you don't have to turn over your worst moments in your whole life to these people who are evaluating you. Um, you know, I think it's important for people to come to grips with things that they have done and move on, but you don't have to sell your soul and tell people the absolute worst things about you to get a job either. Those things will be found out in backgrounds. What they're looking for is on an emotional level or a personable base, they want to know stuff about you. So this candidate had said, you know, like four years ago I got a DUI or whatever and Blah, 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 and my dad had died, and, da, da, and it was like, whoa, dude, this is too much, too, too, too much. So at what point do you feel like too much is too much? I mean, it's important to be honest, absolutely, but I feel that you don't have to bear your soul and humiliate yourself with personal, personal things. And that's a I, pendulum swing to the other side from the one-word answers. You can, right. you can ruin your squander, you fumble it right in front <laughs> of you. The great weakness to have is that you're not bilingual and you would like to one day in the future get Rosetta Stone. You can't beat somebody for that one. I would say if you're going to pull the bilingual thing, you better be working towards it.